Hi guys, my name is Roger, and I'm building a mid-engine supercar in the basement of my home. Let's take a look at what I've been working on this week. I know you guys came here to see the AI-generated car designs, but before we get into that, I want to show you a couple of things that I've been working on the past two weeks. This is a cutting table and a rack that I made to hold all of my carbon fiber materials. And you can see the rolls there. I have two rolls of different weight carbon fiber cloth. I have a roll of, uh, I think it's called Soric. It's kind of a two millimeter thick material that builds up thickness on the carbon fiber part without using the carbon fiber. So it saves a little bit of time and weight. And it's supposed to be really strong also. This is the flow material, bagging material. And you can see the carbon fiber material, the weave here. It's amazing that this stuff is so strong when it sets up. It kind of looks like a cheap woven tarp, a green tarp at this point. But uh, this is about uh, this and the supplies. I have two boxes full of supplies here to use on this material, different things that's needed to do the vacuum infusion. But these rolls here and what's in the boxes is about $3,000 worth of material. I am hoping that this will do somewhere around a third or a fourth of all the car body parts but I don't know just yet. Uh, I will have more of an idea once we get started and see exactly how much material it takes to make each part. But I wanted to show you this and uh, let's take a look at what else I've been working on. And this is an oven. Um, it's just a big wooden box, but I'm going to heat the uh, carbon fiber parts once they're uh, laid up and, and put under a uh, vacuum. And this wooden box is seven feet wide, six feet tall, and two foot deep. Let me show you around it. Um, over here on this side, I have the vacuum pump, a vacuum gauge up at the top. And then here will be a thermostat, a temperature controller with a probe inside the box. And I can program that to keep the box at a certain temperature and uh, it'll only fluctuate a degree or two. It'll shut off the heater when it needs to and turn it back on when it needs to. But this will heat the parts to about, if I'm not mistaken, they need to be heated to 150, 160 degrees. And uh, let me open this and show you on the inside. Okay, here it is with the doors open. You can see that I have the foam insulation on every wall, on the doors, the floor, the ceiling, and everything. And this is to help hold the heat in. I have two of these little ceramic heaters, one on each end. The thermostat will turn these on and off. And up here at the top, I have these two small fans just to circulate the heat in here so all of the heat doesn't go to the top of the box. This will help keep the, uh, the temperature pretty stable everywhere in the box so there won't be any hot spots at the top. This is the temperature probe. It'll mount up here in the center just to get a reference of the temperature to turn the thermostat on and off. And then the vacuum line comes inside the box and it's running to two separate ball valves here. I can hook up to pull vacuum on the parts. I can use one of these or both of these depending on how large the part is. And uh, shut the one I don't need off if I'm only using one. But this is the oven to heat the, uh, the carbon fiber parts once they are ready. And you'll lay up the parts, put them in here, pull a vacuum on them and then do the vacuum infusion to pull the epoxy inside of the mold itself through the carbon fiber weave. And then once the epoxy is pulled throughout the pattern until everything is saturated, then you stop, you clamp off the hose so no more epoxy can go in, and you hold a vacuum on the part and heat it until it's completely cured. And I believe that process takes a few hours. Uh, I need to read up on that and learn all the temperatures and the times exactly. But this is my oven, and uh, I've been working on this this week, several days. It took a while to put all of this together and get it finished, but it is almost done, and I'll, I'll probably be using this on my small part I'm getting ready to make. And speaking of the small part, the pattern here is ready to use. I uh, primed and puttied and filled everything and got this close enough to use. It's still a tiny bit rough here on these edges where the, the wood laminates here where I cut down into them. But it's close enough to make this quarter scale sample part. 
and I have waxed this pattern five or six times and all I need to do now is wipe the final coat of wax off and this part is ready to spray the clear coat onto and I have the clear coat here so that's what I'll be doing the next uh, day or two is clear coating the part and curing it and then getting the carbon fiber pieces cut and laid up and we'll do a vacuum infusion and try to make a, a quarter scale carbon fiber hood and see how that goes but hopefully if all goes well I'll have this part to show you next week okay so this is what you guys really came here to see and these are some pictures of AI generated car ideas uh, Fatah who is the guy that's helping me design the car body took our current car body design and plugged it into some kind of AI software to help generate ideas for the car body and what I think happens is there is an adjustment on the AI software that you can control anywhere from like mild to wild on ideas that the software generates. So once Fatah put the current car body design into the software, these were some of the mild change ideas that it generated. This is the first idea. This is the second idea. And some of the rear views of the car, a little bit mild to a little bit wilder. And then he changed the settings to a little bit wilder just to see what the software would generate. And here are some of the ideas that the software gave us. This was the first idea, which is quite a bit different than our current design. A second rendering, which is very highly modified. And then a third rendering. Now this idea, the second one, it was really quite unique, but it is not practical because of the scale of it. The, uh, the overall height has been squished, the width has been widened and the front grille and radiator area just won't work with my car design so we kind of have to count this one out but after seeing these renderings i decided that i wasn't happy with the current car design i've had several people tell me that it looks like a corvette and i agree it does look a lot like a corvette and i'm wanting to get away from that i'm wanting something more along the lines of a supercar look and something more futuristic looking so if we get rid of this one idea that brings us back to the other two so it comes down to either this one or this one and i wanted to get you guys feedback on which one of these renderings you like the best so if you could leave a comment below in the comment section and let me know which one of these other two ideas that you think i should go with this is the first one which is the orange car and this is the second one, which is the silver car. Just uh, leave me a comment below and let me know which one you like better. And I am going to have Fatah start over and completely redesign on one of these two. I have, uh, I have a preference on which one I like best, but I wanted to see what your feedback is and which one you thought was a better looking car. And I guess that's going to be it for this week's video. And I'll see you guys again in one or two weeks where hopefully... We will be started on a uh, new car design, and also I should have a carbon fiber hood if all goes well to show you. See you guys again in one or two weeks.